Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of Sony's 200 to 600 millimeter 5.6 to 6.3 OSS lens. Now I took this lens out into the real world to the zoo to photograph gorillas as well as photograph eagles. And then I also took it out to a baseball game where I shot the Trenton Thunder from behind the plate to first baseline to the third baseline to see how it worked. Now I did use the Sony A9 in combination with this lens and you can download sample RAW files as well as the full res JPEGs over on the website. And at the very end of this video, I will run a slideshow of images. Now let's take a closer look at this lens. Let's look at some of the specs. One of the first things that you will realize is when you zoom it out, nothing's happening. It's not extending. I mean, something's happening. It's zooming internally. Whereas with the Tamrons and the Sigmas, they extend further out as you zoom. The other major thing is this is the whole zoom range. I'm there, I'm out. Zoom in, zoom out. A 90 degree turn. This is one of the issues I've had with mega zooms in the past, like the Nikon 200 to 500. Even though that's 100 millimeters shorter, I have to twist and twist and twist until I get all the way out to 500. And to get all the way back to 200, I'm twisting and twisting and twisting back the other way. The fact that this is internal zoom means you're not gonna get any creep. I mean, you still may be a creep if you have this lens and you're trying to creep on people like at the, beach, shooting people in bikinis, men or women, whichever you choose, you would still be a creep, but now you're doing it more discreetly because your lens isn't zooming further. Now let's take a look at the weight. This thing weighs 4.65 pounds or 2,115 grams. Now that is two pounds lighter than Sigma's sport version of their super mega zoom lens. Now it is light, It, I mean, it's not that light. The funny thing is that the 600 millimeter F4, even though it's heavier, feels kind of lighter because it just feels more balanced. This thing is feels heavy. Now, with that being said, I didn't use a monopod when I shot the game with this or shot at the zoo. Now, I would recommend for most people out there who don't work out to use a monopod. Even I would probably wanna use a monopod if I was using this for a long time because you can see that I have a ton of shake as I'm holding the lens to get the image. But also you can see that as soon as I'm ready to take the image, I kind of get super duper still. It, it's one of those lenses that is a little hard to carry and, and if you're smaller, you definitely want to use a monopod. Now, how's the autofocus capability of this lens? Now, Sony says that this uses the older linear motors like they have in their 24 to 72.8, but I shot off 32 shots in a row with the A9 of a batter running out of the box. Click, 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 click. That's like 32 shots in a row and it tracked them and it didn't miss. It did a fantastic job tracking the subjects. Now, I can't tell you how it's gonna be with the A7 III and the A7 R3 because I didn't use it on those cameras, but I don't think it's gonna be that far off from the autofocus that you get in the Sony A9. A funny thing I observed with this lens is that when I tried to put it in my bag with the lens hood, you know, not on but receded, it got stuck in my think tank bag when I tried to pull it out because this is a long lens. It's actually two inches longer than the Tamron version. So I had to take the lens hood off and put that somewhere separate so that this lens would fit in the bag and not get stuck. Speaking of the Tamrons and Sigmas, they usually have a 105 millimeter filter thread. This bad boy has a 95 millimeter filter thread. If you're gonna put a filter on the end of this, it's going to still be pretty expensive. So you want to keep that in mind. Now it's priced at 2000 bucks. 
Is that good? Yeah, for a mega zoom like this, I think 2000 bucks is pretty comparable to what you're gonna find with the Tamron and the Sigma, even though those may be slightly less expensive for their higher end versions. This seems like a fantastic option for anybody who's out there who's looking to shoot birds, who's looking to do nature, who's looking to do outdoor sports where you don't have to worry about the bokeh as much in the background. This is a fantastic option. One of the biggest questions people have been asking about this lens is why is it a 5.6 to 6.3. Nikon has a 200 to 500 that's 5.6 all the way through. And you might think that this lens would not go to 6.3 until you get out to 500, but that's not the case. When you go to about 301 millimeters, it's already at 6.3. Now, Sony will defend themselves and say, well, the difference between 5.6 and 6.3 is minimal, so it's not really that big of a deal. I would have just hoped that it's further out, say 500 is where you would have gone from 5.6 to 6.3, but you'll have to determine whether the trade-offs are worth it or not. But now we got the wind tunnel test and the sniff test all at the same time. That's right. It's a new thing called the sniff wind, uh, and it smells like teen spirit. Yeah, because that's all I could think of at the moment. Let me jump in here real quick and say, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or have a great starting point, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com presets. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you like them, they are 40% off for a limited time. Also, as an example, this photo was edited using the Skittles preset from Fropack One. Now let's move on to analyzing the image starting at the Philadelphia Zoo, where when we got there, the gorillas just came outside, so I got to start shooting. Now, here's the first one done at 600 millimeters of one of the baby gorillas. Now, it's 600, of course, it's all the way out at 6.3 for this, and you can see that it doesn't obliterate the background that's close behind the gorilla. It looks kind of more snapshotty, like he's up close, but even though I'm filling the frame at 600, at 6.3, it definitely looks a little more snap shoddy. Now, the daddy gorilla was further away in the distance, so I reached out, and this time, because I have a 200 to 600, I could go to 493 millimeters, fill the frame a little more, and it looks like a good shot. Let's zoom in on it, and it is super tack sharp. Now, that's one of the things people are gonna say. Is there a difference between the 600 millimeter F4 and a 200 to 600 millimeter 5.6 to 6.3? And yeah, there's a $10,000, $11,000 difference, but is there a major quality difference We'll see in just a minute with the bokeh. Moving on to the next image, 600 millimeters again. Here you can see you've got the mother gorilla in the foreground and the baby gorilla, I think it's the mother gorilla. I, yeah, that looks like the mother gorilla. And the baby gorilla sitting in the background. Now being able to have a 200 to 600 means that on the next image, this is what 200 millimeter looks like. And when we go back to the image I was just showing you, this is what 600 millimeter looks like. That is a tremendous range. I rather have 200 to 600 than 150 to 500 because I want that extra reach. I want longer rather than wider in this case. And I just really like the quality that I'm getting out of this lens, including the autofocus, as well as the tones that we're pulling out. And by the way, this is where I used Fropack One's preset called Skittles to give me a really good starting point to edit these gorillas. Now here you see another one at 600 millimeters. I just like that you had the baby gorilla there and the daddy or the mommy gorilla and they're just looking, she's looking angry. She's like, don't look at me, you hairy fro wearing guy at a distance. That's what she really said. She's like, don't look at me. And I'm like, whatever. Um, 553 millimeters. Almost cut off the fingers. I'm not a big fan of the composition of this image. I kind of wanted to get uh, Daddy Gorilla, the silverback here in the background. And that's why in the next one, I was able to go and get it at 365 millimeters. So I got both of the subjects in the frame. Now, a lot of people are gonna use this lens to go out into nature. And I went into nature and by nature, I mean, I went to the zoo where they had eagles because I love photographing the eagles because they sit super close behind this fence, which you can shoot through with a lens like this. You're about 
four-ish feet away from that fence, but you can still obliterate it even with this lens. This is shooting it at 329 millimeters, and as you zoom in on the eyeball, it's just super tack sharp and super gorgeous. Nice colors, nice tones. Skittles did a nice job again, but this is what it looks like at 600 millimeters, and the bird looks beautiful. It is super sharp. I, I, I mean, this is one of those lenses that if you've been waiting to have a super telephoto zoom lens on the Sony side, I don't think you can go wrong for the 2,000 bucks. Now let's move on to baseball, because I went out to photograph the Trenton Thunder on a day where it was thundering and lightning all day, but stopped when it got to game time. So I started down the first baseline to try and photograph the right-hand batters. Now, I I did take a sample image with the 600 millimeter f4, which I did do a review of, as well as the 200 to 600 at 600 millimeters, filling the frame the same exact way for these two shots. The one on the left is done with the 600 f4, and the one on the right is done with the 600 5.6 to 6.3. Now let's point out the differences the background. Look at the stairs in the top right hand corner in both of these images. In the one that's F4, it obliterates the stairs more than in the 6.3. It means that the background distractions at 6.3 are going to be more prevalent. Now, it wasn't a great day, so that's why the seats are empty, because most people stayed home. But look at the difference between these two again, where you look at the seats. You can see that with the F4, the seats are blown out more. The seat numbers are blown out more, where it becomes more of a distraction that if people were sitting there with the 6.3, you could almost see their faces perfectly and the separation isn't as good. But is the separation worthy of an extra $11,000? For most people, they're not even thinking about spending $13,000 on a lens, so it doesn't matter. Let's look at some more images. We've got a guy running down the line. It tracked him. The A9 did a fantastic job locking in on him and allowing me to shoot and capture this moment. He looks super sharp as you zoom in on him running. Nice job, Jared, really good shot. Uh, except you can see that it's 6.3, the background is kind of distracting because you can see, is that girl eating cotton candy? You should never feed girls, not just girls, kids. They don't eat cotton candy. Cotton candy is like the worst thing ever. It's like you get all hyped up. You're like, I want cotton candy. It's like you might as well just pour some sugar down your throat because it's not even enjoyable to eat. It just melts. I don't like cotton candy. This video not brought to you by cotton candy. But if you'd like to pick up this lens or anything else, head on over to adorama.com slash fro because when you use that link, it helps us to buy more cotton candy for me to yell at. Really, let's move on to the next image. Now this is right behind home plate where the pitcher is you know, throwing the ball and stuff. And I'm shooting through netting at 600 millimeters, zooming in on his face. I am super happy with the results I got here. Now, mind you, when you're shooting at night with the 6.3, you're gonna have to bump up that ISO, and I'm at 1 1250th of a second. Now, some people may say, Jared, why are you so fast? You could be at 640th. Yeah, you probably could, but then I'm gonna start getting some motion blur in the arm, and I don't wanna see that with this type of image. I wanna get tack sharp images of the picture. Now this is what it looks like at 200 millimeters. You almost get the entire, you get the umpire, the catcher, the batter, and the pitcher in there. So again, you get that nice range that you wouldn't get with a 600 F4, but like I said, it's always a trade-off. And then 400 millimeters. So I don't have a 402.8, I did have the 600 F4, but this gives me the ability to zoom. 200 to 600 is really cool when it comes to sports because I could go and get the second baseman. I could go and try and get an outfielder or somebody else behind the pitcher and try to get some action shots with it. But as we move on, I just actually like seeing this pitcher who was throwing almost 100 miles an hour uh, throw this high fastball uh, and, and getting the player in there was good. Here's a, here's a guy at shortstop. Now look at the background here. I can see that the Powerballer of the New Jersey State Lottery is at something 50 some million dollars because at 6'3", even though the fences say 400 feet from home plate, so probably 300 or a little less feet away from the, the shortstop, you can, you can see it right easy. You can just see it there. Now this picture at 600 millimeters, you can see the number in the background. You know it's 400 feet to, to center field. I saw a difference between the 600 F4 and the 200 to 600 at 6.3 
where you wouldn't know that the number in the background was actually a number, here you can actually see it. So again, those is that difference that big in this situation? Honestly, no. For the $10,000 difference, uh, 11,000, just look at how sharp this guy is as we zoom in on him. I, I mean, that looks fantastic. I don't know how else to tell you that, that even being $11,000 less, it's almost on par. Like I said, there's trade-offs and all uh, as we scroll through to the last image. I just like this photo. And some people may say, but you cut his foot off. I'm like, yeah, my focus wasn't there on the foot. And, and if you really see how fast this happens and how they move, you kind of don't know where the foot's gonna be, but this is where I could have pulled back just a little bit from the 600 millimeters, and I would have been able to get the whole foot in there, which I did in some of the other images, but I liked the ball placement in this and, and the look on the pitcher's face. Now, don't forget, you can download sample raw files that I'm showing you here. The link is up on the screen as well as in the description down below. Now, normally when you're shooting at night with a 6.3, you might have some trouble. Now I did push the ISO from 3200 to 4000 to 5000 with the Sony A9, and I'm also in a stadium that had pretty good lighting. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna be shooting outside in low light situations, you might run into some trouble with the 6.3 because you may be sending your ISO up to 6400 or higher, which may start to add some noise or grain, especially if you're gonna try and use the A7R3 with the more megapixels. The A7 III is probably gonna handle it fairly well when you're outside shooting. So the big question is, can I recommend this lens? And the answer is yes. If you're a Sony shooter who's been waiting for a mega zoom lens and you don't mind holding something that's four and a half pounds, even if you're not used to holding something like that, then this is a very good option for 2000 bucks. It's great for nature, it's great for birding, you can carry it around, it gives you a huge zoom range. It is at 6.3, but there's always a trade-off with everything. I got fantastic results. I'm happy with the results, even in comparison with a lens that is $11,000 more. Most of you out there are not even thinking about buying a 600 F4, but if you need the mega zoom, this is a very good option. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave some comments down below. Please hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video. And that is where we're gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.